Sean freaking vote. Sean freaking vote. There we vote. go. My king, dude. So we're here, episode 13. I'm determined to try and intro the show, even though I never do. I always just get into it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we are here, episode 13. Something from everyone podcast. The I've been like very uncomfortable with the name. I hate naming stuff. And yeah, that's yeah, one yeah. part of this that like was one of the hardest parts for me was like accepting it. that like because it was gonna be like the peter jt show and i was like that just feels so like narcissistic to me somehow for no reason like that's a very valid thing that it could have been named yeah but I mean, it was I, like, it's actually it kind of has a ring to it man almost, <laughs> but it was like i i don't know i don't feel like it's about me i feel like it's about you okay. <laughs> or the guest yeah and the the fun part here is that like the the inspiration was me saying like i've met too many cool people in this and I've only met them on set when I'm behind the camera and when we're filming this music video. Right, and right. And I don't get to share the rest of the person with everyone. Yeah, So this sure. was my goal to like, yeah, I've met all these fucking sick people who were inspired me, inspire me, and I want to share them with the world. So something from everyone is this idea of like, yeah, everyone, I can get something from everyone. Cool. Awesome. There's a tie there. So I brought you on today. Yay, lucky number. Because my, oh, oh because sorry. My bad, man. My bad. <laughs> Because lucky number 13. Because yeah, yeah, all right, we, we got that out of the way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, because we go way back, way back. So we just watched the Ghost Inside video. Um, I think I, if I'm feeling bold and courageous, I'll put a little bit of the video clip over us. I don't think I can use the audio. I don't think I want to use the audio. <laughs> all right, all right. I don't think that much. Um, but so we met 2014, 2015. We were just kind of recollecting some of this. Yeah. And at the time, in my memory... Uh, you had just gotten a DSLR camera for the first time. I was in the process of learning guitar. This is before I had a camera at all. Yeah. And at the time, I'm recording guitar covers into GarageBand on my MacBook. Yep. And filming the using the front facing camera on my MacBook to film the cover. I movie put that bad bitch together. And then my king posts that he's a DSLR, and I was like, he can make a music video of me. We can do this. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Do you have any memory of that? What was that like for you? So I remember I I had only met you one time and it was at Warp Tour way back. I, th I think it was 2014. and The glory times. Yeah. Yep. The glory days. Yeah. And uh, I remember you had, we hadn't really like talked to me just here and there, but uh, you hit me up. I had posted a status, I think, saying that I got a DSR, like you said. Okay. And uh, you, were, I think that's when you messaged me. You were like, "Hey, were you advertising video? Or were you just like, I have a camera? If anyone? Oh no, I was. I, th I think I was doing picture. Like, I, I never got. You might be the only video I've ever done. Hell <laughs> oh, yeah, dude! That's a once in a lifetime experience. Oh yeah, that's king shit. But um, yeah, no, I, 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 it turned out to be great. Now look at us. <laughs> look at us here. It know? wasn't as great at the time, well, but fair. it turned out great. But it was fun. I think uh, as I looked back at it, there's definitely a. Um, I don't know. I think it showed both of our ability to go out and be uncomfortable. Yeah. Of like, as you watch the video, I am visibly uncomfortable playing the guitar. I'm not good at it. But I was like, I don't know. This is the next step if there is a next step. So let's try this part of it. Right, right. And I think for you creatively, like I know you're into designer, into music, and we'll get into the kind of origins there. Yeah. And I assume one at some point there was a question of like, is camera the part of this that's interesting to me? Right, uh, right. And I think it's cool that it's like, yeah, you explore all these different avenues and you end up in anthems today playing bass. Yeah, there I am, my man, dude. Yeah. So oh, we got through, we got through that that video together. But we did do that. It's over now, dude. Um, we're in anthems now. <laughs> we're catching up to present day. So I want to start with the first video. First okay. video we did. Uh, terrible song names. We got float. Yep. Float. So whose house was that filmed in? So that was filmed in uh, what is it's our practice space. Um, but I live upstairs. Gotcha. So it's me. I live with, uh, me and my singer and then one of our friends from high school. We, uh, rent it out. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Do you have neighbors to worry about there? That's my concern. It looked like it's, residential. I was like, oh, drums inside. Can yeah. You? So it's, it's weird because it's a lot of families around us, mm -hmm. but for some reason it, the noise doesn't seem to carry. Okay. Or at least we've never gotten any complaints. So <laughs> maybe they just like the band enough. I, I think the, the windows that we do open to yeah. get it like that would potentially shoot noise out is it shoots to a house <laughs> that they only are in at, in the summer. So okay, yeah, that works out. Yeah, hell yeah. See, so all are chilling there, writing music together. Is that? Uh, yeah, no. So, um, do do you want me to like tell you a little bit about the writing Please, process? Dude. Okay, yeah, we got all the time in the world. Dude. All right, so um, Dante, who's our singer uh, and uh, rhythm guitarist, he actually uh, like starts the structure and he he writes a lot of the basis of the song. Um, then, uh, we've been, um, 
me like I'll like now that I live with him, I don't even need to record my own bass parts on like the demos. Uh, I could just plug right into his computer, which is you wonderful. are still plugging in. You're not midiing. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm plugging in uh, okay. just so I can get like the parts down and stuff like that. Um, then Caleb comes over and uh, we'll do leads or in like what like we'll all like we'll get that all together. And then uh, I think last is Mark. The, okay, I think he puts the drums on last. Like we just have demo drums down through the. Uh, up until that point, mm -hmm. and then Dante just bounces it without the demo drums, and Mark just writes. Interesting. Yeah, that's a really. I didn't know. I never. I don't know much about writing music, but adding drums last, or I guess adjusting drums last, and yeah. just taking the skeleton of what it is, and then making it human instead of just a bare bones yeah. rhythm. I assume it's really interesting. Are you guys then recording live drums as well? Or is yeah. So the uh, <laughs> we record with Chris Curran, and he's in uh, Thompson, Connecticut, okay. and he. Uh, uh, we record live drums, but actually funny thing about it is that it's also the last. So we still use the demo drums, the MIDI drums up until, well, mind you, Mark's MIDI drums that he recorded. Yeah. But we use those up until the point, the last day when he does all the drums in one take. Interesting. Or not one take, but one day. Is that, a, is that a testament to Mark's creativity that like you guys give him the, the final say because he just has such a he expansive mind that that's where he is an incredible musician. Okay. He is very, I'll be, I'm. All my bandmates are. Hell yeah. That's a good place to be in. Yeah. They're <laughs> great guys. And they, um, yeah, Mark, like I, we, he, the last time that we went into the studio, there was one song that he was, he was like, I mean, he, he knew it, like we had practiced it and stuff, but he, it was like probably the, I would say, at least from what he said, it was the one that he was like, he was just, you know, most uncomfortable he's been. Yeah. And that man nailed it in three takes. Damn. Three takes. Every band has that. It's always a weird thing to me of like, I don't know. I expect that you guys wrote the songs so you guys can play them and do everything well. Yeah. And then this idea, especially recently, is you can write in the computer more that you write a song and then have to learn how to play it. It's yep. so weird to me. Oh, man. But it's and, so normal. And yeah, it's everywhere. And then like, yeah. And then if you write multiple songs like in a short time span, then you forget how to play the early ones. I got to go back and relearn them. And there's only so many chords and choruses like um, – yeah, in my in my ghost inside expertise cover yeah, yeah. days, like there's only zero, three, five, and eight in some extent, and like I feel like confusing though, or like mixing those up through between songs and choruses and getting some of the patterns. Like, uh, yeah, I assume it's intuitive at a point, but yeah, yeah it's definitely got to be weird at first to keep everything straight because songs tend to be somewhat similar. If on a record, they're cohesive, they go together. Yeah, then, for sure. There's yeah. definitely a lot of like, even if it's, if anything, I'm, and I'm. This is where I give uh, Dante kudos. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it as well as he does without like a lot of overlap and them sounding too similar. Yeah, he has a he's, he has a knack um, for uh, writing songs that are cohesive, like mm -hmm. really cohesive, but still have their own flavor. Like uh, what we're what are, like our release that we're preparing mm -hmm. um, is uh, the every song kind of has its own thing. Okay, but at the same time, it's also. Uh, like it all fits and work mm -hmm. together, you know. Have you in the past written songs independently? Like a, even in a bunch of bands, a bunch of projects throughout the years. Have you? Yeah, is that the uh, is writing music part of it that you're interested in, or is it yeah, the performance yeah. part? Yeah, yeah. There was a while, like I I recorded like some things on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, last right before I joined Anthems, I was doing mm -hmm. that. Nothing was ever released though. So. Okay. Yeah. Is that singing as well? So um, it never got to that point. <laughs> okay. okay. I gave up like halfway through the instrumental. I'm like, nah. Do you have any help? Do you do backing vocals and anthems? Um, little... on the new, the, we have the newest song that we added to our set. I do. Okay. Um, and come there's back. a couple songs that I have like on little things here and there on record. But... Is that exciting? Something you'd like to do more of? Like I, when it's... I met you, you were a bass player and a singer and now you are playing bass more, more specifically. Yeah. Do you miss that yeah. half of it? Or are you happy in it, a simpler role? I was nervous to start <laughs> doing it again. I was like, I'm yeah. very rusty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, no, I, I actually like being more of like a, a assistance mm -hmm. or a backup vocalist than uh, being the main one anymore. Yeah, I think it's uh, I like I like where we're at. You know, yeah, that's cool. I it must be hard to step away from the mic at some point. I think it, uh, it was a transition of like you're yeah used to being. Uh, the right hand man, so yeah. to speak, and then all of a sudden it's like oh you're, you're just one of the guys again. Yeah, actually. It, it it was at first for sure, mm -hmm. um, and like like after set sail, yeah, that was the last time I sang as like the singer, mm -hmm. like you know, um, and I was it was it was weird at first, um, but then uh, when I joined the next band, um, we uh, 
I was like, okay, like maybe playing bass, especially when like the parts are harder, it keeps me involved, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And now with anthems, it's a little bit, a little more simpler. Is it? Is that fair yeah, to say? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's actually been really fun and uh, a change of pace because it's music. Like I've been playing metal for the last like yeah. 10, not even, not, probably like eight years. Yeah. You know, and it's just, uh, it's, it's really nice. I was, it's a genre that I've only listened to. Mm -hmm. But never really played since like maybe high school. I think that's that was cool. the last soft band I was in. That's cool. Yeah, it's a it's a unique brand of pop punk too. I think uh, yeah, pop punk sometimes gets a rap of being very generic and bland. I think you guys have a good way of yeah. keeping it unique and flavorful and Thank you. yeah, exciting and interesting. Thank you. Um, I've been I've enjoyed watching you guys grow and yeah, I, you know I told Kale that it seems like you guys grew like weeds out of nowhere. Where yeah. it was just <laughs> there was no anthems and then anthems was playing four times a month it all over the place. Does seem like that. Uh, <laughs> it seems like that's us too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great problem to have. It's been incredible right, to right. watch, it, watch it grow up. Uh, and then it did grow up through post as I look for my cheat sheet for the other song. Oh, no, that's all right. Dude, you'll, you'll get it. I've got, the, I've got the orange visuals in my head. I've got the whole video painted in my head. Just the name. Uh, <laughs> even my own videos. It's so embarrassing. We're like, I can tell you anything about most of my music videos. I can tell you where you were, what it smelled like, where the temperature was, right, who was right. in the room. Yep. The name of the song is not one of those yeah. things. Almost exclusively. And that's it's, all right. It's wild. Um, but whatever <laughs> we live and learn but i love that video it was like outside there's uh, yeah can you explain it for me i know there's yeah. orange paint and uh whatever sand so whatever you the, call that the funny thing about this one all right so with float we um our drummer uh directed both of them mm -hmm. uh so we actually we had one of uh, one of his buddies that he has worked with in the past uh came in and did like the director of photography okay um and then he mark did everything else uh, directed it like when he wasn't playing in the shots, mm -hmm. he was behind him going like, dude, you know what I mean? Um, with float, there was, it, because it's just a playing video, there wasn't like a ton of like, I mean, Mark definitely planned out what kind of shots he would like to mm -hmm. see. Um, and we also like put input like, Hey, this could, could look cool, you know? Um, with, slide, slide this a little closer to me. Oh, right? sorry. All right. You can, whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, with post, the thing about that one is that Mark, uh, like three months, there might have been longer. He was every practice. He's like, all right, I got revisions. He had like a whole sheet down of what we were going to do at specific timestamps. Everything. Interesting. And, I was wondering, yeah, how precise yeah. it was. Uh, yeah, I always want to. So the music video, I guess, uh, follows a narrative of you guys. Uh, you're outside. There's some. Uh, what is the narrative of the video? I guess I'm, as I can see it. I can all see right. the scenarios unfold. But yeah, yeah what's yeah. the if I was to write it on a piece of paper, what is the story of the video? All right. So the idea is that, um, the, like, uh, sometimes, uh, the lyrics are about like, just kind of like self, uh, from what I know, mm -hmm. I'm horrible with interpreting lyrics most of the time, but Dante's really good at keeping it like open. Yeah. Um, the way I, it's kind of like, we were trying to like, like give him, like show him that we loved him. Mm -hmm. And that's why at the end, he's the last one to become orange. Gotcha. Yeah. You're all scientists. You're all yeah. trying experiments on it. And he wasn't impressed by any of them mm -hmm. doing all like the feather duster, all that stuff. Um, it looked like the most fun ever to be yeah. it looked cold and windy which is another thing i wanted to bring up oh, yeah but it looks like it was about as fun as humanly possible well yeah so if aside from being like 27 degrees it was great how long are you guys i mean it looked like a 10 to 4 full day outside it was i think we got there at 9 a.m and went, we're out there until like five yep yeah we actually that's the other thing i was going to mention so the video after the three months that mark was planning it getting like the you know the smoke bombs and all mm -hmm. that stuff um we we Planned a day. We're like, all right, we're going to do all day. We're going to get it all done. We still had to do another day. And it, unfortunately, yeah. it was right around Christmas time. So we uh, it got kicked out like almost a month later. We finished it. That's really tough. Uh, do yeah. you know specifically what scenes got filled in? I, yeah. So I didn't know that. It's a really, um, really proud that you tricked me i guess i'm impressed i'm happy to be tricked i yeah, guess yeah, yeah, yeah. i want to i want to know the secrets now all right so the last the last scene that was filmed on the first day was uh dante walking through the smoke and us running around mm -hmm. with the things after that us waking so up on the grounds and all the live shots were done on the second day okay so we were out of there that day at like two okay that was an easier but, one yeah. yeah still cold still so so bad yeah it seems like it i was uh I was laughing. Everything's desaturated. The orange is there, and there's a little piece of your ears. And oh, I was like, oh, that I, I I could feel Mark's pain there. I'm sure oh, yeah. he was very aware of it. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, it's not worth going in and rotoscoping out each ear. Like yeah. it's just not feasible. So you gotta <laughs> yeah, right, right. Sometimes make a sacrifice. Oh, my there. ears get real, um, real cold. But as uh, it would have, yeah, I was like, it looked cold and windy. It was what I thought watching it. Of like I, I yeah, I think as I'm, uh, I think it 
fooled a lot of people and as someone who makes music videos and it's always looking for the little thing i was like yeah. oh, there's not enough leaves in there for it to be warm outside you know <laughs> but i think i think that it, it we were worried that it was going to snow up and before the second uh-huh. day it did and then it melted. Dry, it melted but it was so it was extra muddy when we got there the second day oh and that's when you're laying down yep yep yeah but at that point it because we did the live shots first okay. and that was the last thing we did gotcha okay um because we we're waiting for the ground to freeze gotcha yeah interesting um yeah that's a wild one is that like a someone's backyard is it a field in someone's so that was the whole video was filmed at Hotbrook park uh in Nogatuck middlebury line no one cared that you guys were just out there throwing uh, paint around not necessarily not really <laughs> i mean it's a big park there's like quite a lot a lot of like walking trails and stuff i mean we waited to do the drums until the like ladies would, or people would walk by with their dogs stuff like that <laughs> no way dude yeah, yeah, yeah. i was sure that someone yeah it's had a big backyard someone's parents had a big plot we of land we were gonna or... do it at caleb's uh, uh somewhere up at, in caleb's area which is a lot more like open and stuff yeah um and then we were like wait Right down the street from our like my house, practice, like our practice yeah. space, there's this huge park. Why not do it there? That's crazy. And we, I was like, okay, for weeks we're like, all right, maybe we should ask permission, yada yada. And then we never did. Yeah. So we just <laughs> we we're like, all right, if we get kicked out, we get kicked out. But I, uh, at some point early in my career, I got the advice that it's better to ask for forgiveness and permission a lot of times. It's a great, that great like quote. Exactly, <laughs> exactly what that was of like. Yeah, there are times where it's like if we ask, they're going to say no, but they probably won't bother us. So let's just right, let's right. go see if we can. And if we need forgiveness, we'll cross that bridge hey, when we get there. That's right. Damn, that's a. It's also bold for Mark to put three months of planning into Indeed. a public space without a permit. Like I would have, I would have been real nervous going into that. And it's incredible that it worked out and looks so great. Thank you. Um, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. That one was, uh, I was like, we're going to have to top this now. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, we've we got to figure that out That's now. a good question. Yeah, what yeah. is the next iteration? Are you guys, is that um, cooking up? Are you thinking about what the... Well, I think hopefully we'll, I think the last single we're going to put out, um, well, I'm just going to, we're putting out an EP on April 14th. Hell yeah, dude. And day before tax day, oh, day before my sister's birthday, I have to change that. Oh, well, that that even here's oh, okay, ready okay. for this trifecta, dude. What's this is a, my family listens to this, and it's always funny when I mention them because I know I'm going to hear about it in like a week and a half from yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> but my sister was born on April 15th, which is tax day. Yep, it's the day the Titanic sank. Yo, and the day Lincoln was either shot or died. I can't remember because there's like two Yo. days between that, but it's like this wild trifecta. Well, of like your sister is the, is the positive stuff. part of that thing. She is, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's great, she's lovely, but growing up, that was always one of those fun facts that we would joke about. That is like, pretty good. Wild, that is pretty good. Wild trilogy uh, um, to be associated with. But uh, I don't know why I brought that up or where that came from. Oh, because April 14th. April 14th, we got yeah. a new EP coming out. My yeah. man, that's exciting. So, uh, is it an EP or an album? Uh, it's a six song EP. Hell yeah. Um, and we're going to put one more song out. Uh, well, that's to be for uh, everyone to find out. Hell yeah. Um, Sometime but, between now and eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, we um, we uh, aren't, aren't doing a music video for that one. Hell so yeah, okay. I think it might be like whatever we release next mm-hmm. after this. Was when we'll start, uh, you know, thinking up how we, how the hell we're gonna do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, how does it feel to be releasing an EP after all these years? I, it's been a little bit since you were part of a release process. Yeah, yeah. Just like to be back in the saddle, this, back in the spotlight. This release has come close to put me in the grave. Yeah, yeah. No, in no, no. It's just Obviously, been as a euphemism, but yeah, right. Mean? Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, it's uh, yeah, it's it's it's, it's the one I. have the last couple of times I've been in like releases, like the logistical parts of it, like planning timelines, planning like how we're yeah. going to do it, how we want to <laughs> like execute certain things. Um, I wasn't really like I would I'd be a part of it, but mm-hmm. I wasn't like the leader or not leader per se. But you know what I mean, like, like you were trying a wall to drive it, fund yeah. the, helping fund it, and saying yes. Right, right, yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, that works, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, no, this one I was like, I was like, okay, let me try to like do what I can to mm-hmm. like you know get this going and. It's been a process, but a good one. Is there anything you can talk about from that quite yet, or is that post-release discussion? Like, what's um, been so stressful, or what's a, a task that you took on that that stunk, that wasn't what you thought it was going to be? Ah, uh, let me think. So, the I would say the most well, one of the stressful things was I, uh, um, we I, uh, you mean know, oh, so when you're recording. You, you only have a certain amount of money to give to like, you know, so we were recording yeah. like a roll. It, we got float. Mm-hmm. That was a one-off. We mm-hmm. hadn't recorded anything else on the EP when that was released. Okay. Um, we knew it want, it, we wanted it to be a part of it. So you heard that too. But some, of but, it, um, <laughs> some out of a demo run, a trial yeah, run. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then we, um, 
you know, just through planning when we're all adults, like, what are we going to do? You know, yeah. uh, it took us a little bit to get back in and get post on, mm-hmm. um, in the, and then one of the other songs that'll be on it. Um, mm-hmm. and then the last time we went to the studio, we just knocked out the last three. Gotcha. Um, cause like, like, you know, we're all adults. Like, you know, Chris is an adult, you know, Chris Coran, you know, yeah. it's, we can only, we can, we have scheduling as adults, a lot harder than uh, high school. <laughs> yeah, and no one talks about that part of the release. Like, it's exciting to put on an album, but every every other part of that process stinks. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's similar to playing a live show, I think. Like, being on stage is so cool, but the process of selling tickets or whatever that pre-show agreement is yeah. stinks. Getting there and loading in stinks. Yeah. Trying to find food that day stinks. Waiting and being bored. Like, there are a lot, of course, there's a lot of great parts of that. Like, I don't want to oh, say yeah, that it all course. stinks, but similar to the album release, it's like, yeah, putting out an album is a great thing, but there's so much dirty work that goes into it behind oh, the yeah. scenes that, uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought it up because it is an exciting thing to put on an album, but I think it's also a, it's it's a, a mountain you climbed. It's, yeah. a, it's an achievement more than just musically. Yeah, and I, I will say I, my band, uh, like my bandmates, are, mm-hmm. we're all really good about dividing up the stuff. Yeah. So, um, they we've all hustled as hard as we can to get this out. Hell yeah, I'm excited to so see I'm, it all come together. Thank you. Uh, I know you're also working on the graphic design side of stuff. Is yeah. that a creative process for you or is that part of the band? Oh, uh, so all right. So I initially started um like when we were going to release Float, I was like, "Hey, let me see if I can cuz all right, so I the last time I had done graphic design was my senior year of high school. Perfect, yeah. But I remember Which was like, like 6 months ago. Yeah, month? right. Yeah, 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 you know, back in 2011. <laughs> but uh yeah, so the uh, I had like not really used those programs. I'd use Lightroom and like mm-hmm. stuff, but not Photoshop, not Illustrator. I I have personal problems with both of those. Uh, I, Illustrator, but still don't really get it. Dude, but. I, <laughs> <laughs> Dude that one's that one's a bear. But, Sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, no, I've used it since high school. Yeah, so uh, we uh, I was like, you know, let me see if I still enjoy doing this. You know, it's like uh, I had I had the program still, mm-hmm. so I was like, you know, let me check this out. So I tried it and I really like fell in love with trying to like, you know, cause it was a way of us bringing our vision together with, uh, mm-hmm. and then all of us be involved, like every step, like mm-hmm. I would send revision after revision. You know what I mean? I've heard, I've heard rumors. Of the oh yeah. Dude. The like, infamous revision wait until you, the EP cover has gone through like 13. Yeah. 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 But, um, and they're all like the smallest change, but yeah. <laughs> that's every revision ever. Yeah. As right. I, uh, with a music video, it's like, I could work on a music video forever. And there is a, there's a point where you just have to say, okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm also, there's part of my brain that's curious of like, what happens if I worked on it forever? Like things have to go out in a week or two, right? Or whatever yeah. the timeline is, like I have to move on to the next thing. I can't make a living if all I make is one vi- music video for the rest of my life. Right. Right. Like that's going to be, I have to be a bigger budget. <laughs> right. I'm, right. I'm yeah. You better be able right? to set me up for life. But, right. but. But yeah, there is, like you said, with the graphic design, like there is an infinite amount of tweaking that can be done. Oh, yeah. And it is interesting to, yeah, that thought experiment of like, what, what would happen yeah, yeah. in that world if I closed my doors for a month and said, all right, yeah. this is this is it. These three minutes are going to be crafted. Dude, I, like um, uh, Dante actually had, he, he had to cut me off. He was like, all right, mm-hmm. that's it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> that's the one. Because yeah. I, I, like, you know, like with, as you're saying, like with anything, you could just drive yourself mad doing it. Yeah. You know, you can work on it forever. Yeah. And, you know, but especially when it's your own product, and that's the danger of doing that. Like recording yourself. Yeah. Um. You know, being your own. Be, yeah, being your own producer, being your own graphic designer, stuff like that. But I really just wanted to, um, just try my hand at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm learning every day. Keep you know, keep keep moving on. But I I I'm pat myself on the back a little. I've made a lot of progress. Hell yeah! I saw you posting that you were doing a design a day, which I think is a brilliant way to force yourself to progress. And yeah, I think the um, the common issue with artists is like, I don't feel inspired today. And it's like, that's okay. Yeah. A lot of times you're not, yep. uh, but there are still ideas that can come out and things you can do. And even if the idea today is a bad one, you still discovered the new tool that you've never used before. You exactly. still new at skill. least got, yeah, got something out of your head. You had to Google this new rule and that principle is now like, yeah, even though it's a, a bad day and there's no good design yeah. that's going to go to a client that day or to your own band. Right. It's still a productive day. And I think that's a really important uh, strategy to take on. Definitely. And I, I even, it could even be just something as like, just learning like, like altering type and stuff, mm-hmm. like to make like a logo shirt or something. Dude, fonts are my nemesis. Oh, dude, I, I it take, I, I've been battling them, but I, I'm like slowly, slowly getting them under control. Uh, it like, there's nothing more nauseating to me than when I'm titling a music video and the video, um, let's call it six feet under oh, sure. right. <laughs> hypothetically. Right. Yeah. So you type that into the, uh, the search bar and then just like 40 versions of that pop up in all the different fonts that like 
visual is so like overwhelming and nauseating yeah. to me of just they're all the same but kind of different and it's like which one do i pick i'll pick all of them i don't care just put something in yeah, the video please, make it please. done <laughs> it's the worst dude there's nothing oh i'm like i'm a i'm annoyed at myself for even making myself think about it right now <laughs> right right yeah yeah no we don't want to get we don't want to get bad on here <laughs> but, um, uh, but no i related to the process of the perfection thing i had a similar thing with the podcast it's kind of a, a meta conversation and talk about it on it um but yeah i had the same thing of like i didn't like the name i didn't know what to do the set like i'm i'm happy with how it turned out but it's i still have oh, what if i i want to add like plants to it like i uh, I've had this idea of like adding plants to, like a foreground, so you're, like yeah. looking in and like I don't know. There's a million ways it could grow. I'd like nicer mics, nicer equipment. Like, and I had to. It's like no, just put it out. I don't know if it's gonna be perfect. I don't know if it's gonna be great, Man, but it needs to be done and be processed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's a something we all do in a different version of it. Absolutely. Um, Hell yeah, dude. Uh, we uh, I was one last thing to add. Please, for that. please, please. Yeah. You uh, the. The naming process of naming a band as yeah. well, same like you were saying oh, with the I can't podcast. Imagine, yeah. I man, we made lists and lists and lists, and then we were like, "Well, okay, there is an anthem, so we're gonna take out the E." Mm-hmm. And then I realized that we're cute without the E, and that's the pun I go with. Even though all we were like, "All right, either we're turning the A upside down, or we're taking out the E." Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> so. um, dude, I wanted to go back. So we've been through uh, anthems is kind of the present day is a great yeah. thing. There is a lot of history going backwards, and I want kind of wondering like, how does that all grow, and what do you take from that going into anthems? And I think specifically for me, it's the set sale days. I can't have you in here and not <laughs> bring up set sale. Yeah. But I mean, that's a, a high school version of a band. It's uh, an early version of you, and I would assume that there's a lot of stuff that translates, and a lot of, a lot of stuff you look back and go, I, I wish I knew this, or I wish yeah. you did that differently. What's like carried with you as you S- so revisit the scene? There was so when I was all right. I, I joined my first band when I was twelve. What I, band was that? Oh, uh, this band, like a high school, like it was, well, that, at that point it was probably middle school. Okay. Uh, it was called Some of My Mistakes. And Hell I played yeah, drums. Dude. That bangs. Yep. I had no idea. Okay. My first show ever was at a coffee shop in my hometown. And the feeling I got as soon as I sat down to play the drums, I've never forgotten it. Ever. Interesting. It was, that was like, yep, this is, I got to keep doing this. That's so cool. That's similar uh, to our Ghost Inside video is, yeah, me watching that and going, I really like this editing part. I edited the video, yeah. but the playing guitar part and the being on camera part, none of that worked for me. But I like this other part I got to Oh, do. yeah. So I can relate to, yeah, you singing the drums and going, oh, uh, this is it. Yep. Uh, at that point, had you been drumming for a little, like, yeah, I didn't know you were yeah, drumming so at all. Where that I, um, I, I was in the, uh, like, the town drum corps. Okay. Um, so I did, like, like snare, like, stuff. But uh, the singer of that band uh, taught me how to play drums, like a drum set. Okay. In, like, he got me like at least moving my foot at the same time. You joined a band, yeah, and then learned how to play drums in that band. So you just joined yeah. like as a triangle player, and then well, you no. Know, so he knew that I knew how to play the <laughs> snare drum, and he was like, "All right, now move your foot at the same time." And I was like, "Oh, this is hard." You know? Okay, that's the only instrument that I can't imagine being able to play. And I, at some point, I will buy an electric kit and yeah. make myself learn some oh, basic man. level. You'll of be it. better than me. I haven't played in years. It's impossible. Like I can imagine playing guitar enough to be good i don't think i am but yeah. i think in five years of practice i can imagine playing yeah. drums it's like i can't even imagine it like it just doesn't compute Dude. um but at 12 years old yeah. you're figuring it out you're adding in seven other drums to the ones oh, that yeah. you're used oh, to. Yeah. and there's like yeah i got a whole rack of toms mm-hmm. i'm like yeah oh hell yeah dude everyone needs a rack of toms <laughs> oh, 12 years of course, old dude. <laughs> you're a little Four cowbell times. i'm going at, going at it but hell yeah so you're 12 you're learning drums yep and i was in that i was in that band up until i think the first like us so, uh, freshman year of high school mm-hmm. um then i um, between that and then when i think joined set sale it was a lot of like trial and error yeah um a lot of bands I, I, i've met a ton of great people a lot of people i'm still friends with mm-hmm. um but a lot of it like I, it was, a lot of them we struggled to take off yeah or at least like get to the point of playing like more than one show um set sale i will give credit to for being the the one i started learning the most in mm-hmm. and then half-hearted extended that and i never thought i would have been able to do any of the stuff that we all did oh yeah so that's uh specifically warp tour yeah what is in, i think it's 2014 you guys end yep. up playing what is that day like what is that experience like i think that's uh, a mecca for a lot of us and i know you <laughs> didn't play the main stage wasn't the biggest but you were there. You had the bracelet. You had the wristband. You got to feel like you were a part of it. Yeah. It was – so when we, when we played with Set Sail, it was like, yo, 
I this doesn't seem real. Yeah, it was like I was on stage. We were on stage, and I'm like, this still isn't real. But it was. It, I'm very grateful that it was able to happen. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, it's got to carry with you at some point. Uh, I think. For me, it was uh, I shot Good Charlotte at some point in time, what? and like Good Charlotte for me was growing up was like the band. That was the oh, band, yeah. uh, and to photograph them a couple years ago on their like comeback tour, I think I tying it to you playing Warp Tour of like I don't know if that thing changed my career. I don't know if anyone there changed like I don't know if that changed my day. But for me to actualize that and realize that I could be a part of this thing, oh yeah, was like oh that's a big corner to turn. Like yeah, not that Good Charlotte knows who I am. They have like I I got them for some magazine, whatever. Like right, but just to connect myself to this old version of me was like oh shit, this is possible. There's yeah. a thing here, and I'd assume playing Warped Tour is similar. Like it was, it it was, and it was um you know especially at the point that like the stage of set sail that we were in when we played mm-hmm. it. I, I like to think that it was we you know, we had just we had gone through and we had grown together like at least a lot of us that yeah. were in it. Yeah. Um we you know were f- like you know been in it for a while. So yeah. it's uh we all grew together and it was I don't know it was I, I don't think any of us thought it was yeah. real but at the same time I think it was I I, I consider it one of the best things I've ever I, yeah. I've ever been able to experience. There was some like yeah. battle of the bands that got you there? Uh, for yes, yeah, something. Yeah, it was. Like, I think it was like the non- the online thing. Okay. Um, I, I and I'll give credit. I think Bart. <laughs> I think Marty did that one. Okay. Um, and he. Uh, yeah, it's one of the many legwork things. I feel like oh, always yeah. one thing that comes up here is the we think of, be- of being a band is playing guitar, and it's like no, no, no. There's 70 skills you need to be in a band. Oh yeah, and being good at online competitions oh, is man, one dude. of them. Like he was. <laughs> uh, I I've been between him and a lot of people. In, you know, other bands. I've mm-hmm. been. Really grateful to have people that are like bandmates that are good with people, because you know sometimes I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> you know I'm just a little awkward sometimes. Yeah. And, you know it's just about connecting. And I, right now I think Caleb's like amazing with it. Yeah, like not that the rest of my band isn't, yeah. but I think he's just really really good at it. So yeah, it's important. I think there's an interesting uh, musicians aren't people 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 by nature right like it's they're kind of different i think it's interesting that a lot of musicians are maybe not people people but once they're on stage they can become a people person yeah and that that transitioning kind of duality it's always really fascinating to me of people who are very quiet and meek off stage or yeah. yeah very happy to sit back and be calm and then on stage it's a big performance and a big exuberant thing and yeah, yeah it's right, interesting right. to watch those people come alive and oh man i mean like, but then you have to remember like especially with like like emo and stuff like mm-hmm. that the lyrics come from somewhere yeah people have their down days yeah. you know and it yeah. just it's hard um i i would say at least from there's times in set sale I, I got off stage and didn't want to talk to anybody yeah but just because it was just one of those days yeah. but you know, it uh, eventually I realized I'm like I am really like I I'm very lucky to be here. Yeah. Like at any sort of show, you know. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? It's like you know, like what, like jobs say, like leave that at the door. And I hate that term most of the, or that phrase most of the time. Yeah. But with music, it seemed like I was like, okay, I could probably do that. Yeah. You know. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a really weird thing to try and separate yourself from this emotional poem you wrote at some point of right. her years ago and yeah. yeah now you're on stage being like what's up city that i'm in today here's this really personal thing that right. i went exactly. through a little bit ago exactly. hope you guys love this one this is for the band before us yeah right right <laughs> like, thank you yo, yeah yeah but, yeah that's a wild one i uh yeah i can't imagine that i don't know i've uh it's funny to me how much I enjoy this industry and how much I appreciate about it, but the idea of being in a band is so daunting and impossible. Like it's just, I, I was as a kid, that was a dream. Everyone's dreams of that. And as I get older, I'm like, oh, thank God that what like yeah. it's just not <laughs> for me. It's not what I'm good at. It's not what I'm wired yeah, and curious man. in. Um, but it is an incredible thing to to make happen. Uh, and I think the yeah, good old days, my man. So yeah. looking back there, uh, <laughs> we got 2024 coming up, which marks 10 years since Warp Tour. Yeah. Is there a set sale reunion show booked for the next year? Hey, never say never. Uh, but we do have the Anthems EP coming up. What else is coming up in the future? What else is it, like exciting to you? I feel like there's been a, a lot of band stuff that you've been through a lot of yeah, yeah ups and downs through it all. What what keeps Anthem exciting or what keeps Anthems exciting? And yeah, what's exciting coming so, up? So I mean, right now we don't have like uh, we don't have any shows like near like re- like soon. Um, so we're taking the time, like, and this, this, this part is fun too. Like sometimes the process of learning stuff mm-hmm. sucks, but, um, we're, we're starting like, we're taking this time to kind of like ramp up the, the live performance a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, get our st- stuff a little tighter and stuff. Hell yeah. Um, 
which will be nice because like like we joked about earlier like i mean they're what we we're playing at least one or two shows a month it's been so started. yeah it's been so impressive honestly to watch Thank you guys you. like keep up the pace uh, we're trying we were str- we were suffocating sometimes or running ourselves over you know what i mean I but it yeah. was we you know it's been really like a lot of fun and like you said you're all, all adults yeah. and there's lives outside of it and yeah. a weekend off means that the week the other weekend is when you have to do all the other adulting that needs yep. to get done. And Clean yeah, those weekends yeah. do accumulate. Definitely. Yep. Um, hell yeah, dude. I'm so to see you guys keep creating. It's just a, yeah, it's been fun for us to watch it fold. And you guys all seem excited about it and yeah, really invested in it. So I'm curious to see how it continues to grow my man. Hey, thank um, you. Hell yeah, dude. I think, I think that's a good place to wrap up. I always kind of do a brain check of like, what, what am I? I, I always push the red button and then I go, Oh yeah. That was it. That was the conversation I wish I had. Yep. Um, but I'm feeling okay, my man. I am. Um, hell yeah, dude. That's a good place to pause, dude. Awesome. How do you feel about life? Uh, so Anthem's EP coming out. What was the date again? Uh, April 14th. April 14th. Yep. We'll keep a lookout for it. Where do they find Anthem's online? Okay. So uh, on all socials, we are uh, uh, Anthem's band. Um, and then uh, you can find us on Facebook. I think it's... Uh, like the URL is Anthem Spend. Mm-hmm. And then Mr. Sean Vogel, uh, where are you going to be? Where can I find you on Instagram? All right. I am uh, Sheen, S-H-E-E-N, Vogel, V-O-G-E-L. Yep. Hell yeah, dude. I yeah. appreciate you coming out today. I appreciate you making time for me. Hell yeah, man. Uh, Thank I you. I appreciate you supporting me since before day one of my day. Yeah, 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 <laughs> day negative 10. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, hell yeah, dude. It's been a pleasure. And Thank we will you, talk man. very soon. Yeah, absolutely. As in like right now. 